Welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 45 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the range validator control in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 44 of this video series. Range validator is used to check if the value is within a specified range of values. For example, to check if the age falls between 1 and 100. On this screen, you can see a text box where the user can enter age. And the allowed range here for the uh, age is 1 and 100, but the user has entered 121, which is beyond the allowed range. And hence, the error message is displayed stating so. Age must be between 1 and 100. And to do this, we are using a range validator. As the name suggests, a range validator is used to validate for a given range. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. And I have this HTML already typed in just to save some time. So let me copy and paste this HTML. And this is very straightforward. You know, all, all this HTML is doing is displaying this word age, a text box button, and a label control. So if we inspect the source here, it's a table within which we have this word age in the bold tag, a text box control, a button, and a label control. All right, so we want to allow the user to enter age into this text box, and we want to ensure that age falls between 1 and 100. So let's drag and drop the range validator control. So just like any other validator control, it has got the ID. Uh, let's give this ID a meaningful name. Since it's validating age, I'm going to call this range validator age. Run it is equal to server. Let's give meaningful error message. Age must be between 1 and 100. OK, so that's the error message. And the next important property that we have to specify uh, is the control to validate. Which control should this range validator validate? It should validate the text box age. So txt age is the ID of that text box. Let's copy and specify that here. OK, control to validate. And we want the error message to display uh, in red color. So four color is equal to red. So these are the properties that are common to every validation control. But then let's now look at the properties that are specific to range validator. Now range validator, as we know, it uh, checks for a given range. So obviously, we have to specify the minimum value and maximum value of that range. And how do we do that using the minimum value property? So the minimum value in our case is going to be 1, and maximum value is going to be 100. OK, now we know that age is an integer, but we need to tell that to the range validator control. So how do we tell that? Using the type property. So type is going to be integer. And other allowed types are currency, date, double, and string data types. So I'm going to select integer as the type. OK, so these are the properties that we need to specify for a range validator control. Now let's go ahead and run this and see uh, what happens if we enter a range that doesn't fall, uh, you know, fall between 1 and 100. So let me enter 121, click Save. We get that error message as expected. OK, now let's do some server-side processing. So obviously, uh, if I enter a valid age, I want to save this to the database. So I double-click the button control. Even handlers get generated. So if page dot, there's a property called is valid property at the page level. And this is a Boolean property. This property is going to return true if the all if all the validation controls passes validation, in which case we want to save the data to the database. So I'm going to say label status dot text is equal to data saved. In real time applications, we actually save the database to the database. Uh, in the sense, we will have the actual ADO.NET code here. But here, just to save time, we are just printing that message onto the screen. And basically, I want to set the color of the label to a green color. So system dot drawing dot color dot green. Okay. Now if this property returns false, then we know that it will come to the else block, which means at least one validation control has failed validation, in which case we don't want to save the data. So we want to display a message saying validation failed and data not saved. And here, I want to show the color of the label as red. OK, so now let's run this. 
and let's enter an invalid age as you might expect we get the validation message but if I enter a valid age then I'll be able to submit that but look at this even if I don't enter any age there and then when I click save button I'm able to successfully submit the page to the server for processing so the important thing to keep in mind uh, here is that the range validator control only validates data if you provide data if you don't enter data then range validator will return true in the sense you know it passes okay so if you end to ensure that the user also enters age then we have to use required field validator as well so let's use the required field validator control along with the range validator control here so let me drag and drop the required field validator onto the web form so required field validator let's give it a meaningful ID since we are validating age I'm gonna call that required field validator age run it is equal to server and let's give it a meaningful error message let's say age is required and obviously another important property is to con is control to validate we have to specify we want to validate this text age text box so that's one thing and then I want the error message to be red in color so I'm gonna specify the color as red okay so now let's run this and see if both the validation controls work okay so if I don't provide a, an age and try to save look at that age is required the validation message is shown which is very good but then look at where it's displayed it's being pushed away from the text box control and why is that that's because this space is occupied by the range validator control let's inspect the source I right click on the page view source and if you look at the age uh, text box there look at the age text box so I have the age text box here and then I have this range validator and then I have the required field validator now range validator is not shown but it is still occupying that space there that's why age uh, validation I mean required field validator uh, error message is being pushed away and look at how these um, messages are rendered you know they're using the style visibility colon hidden look at that style attribute visibility colon hidden both of them now when the controls use this property even though they are not displayed they're going to occupy that space on the screen and that's the reason why this message is being pushed away from the control okay let's see how to correct this and to correct this it turns out that we have a very simple property called display property and every validation control supports this property now display property is going to take three values the first one is none so let's flip to presentation so display property which is supported by all validation control the first value it allows is none when you set display property to none error message is not at all rendered and displayed to the con next to the control this property is basically used to show the error message only in the validation summary control we'll talk more about this option when we talk about validation summary control but whereas when you set the display property to static the error message is displayed next to the control if the validation fails but the space is reserved on the page for the message even if validation succeeds and the span tag that that displays the error message is rendered with style visibility colon hidden and we have just seen that whereas if we set the property to dynamic the error message is displayed next to the control if the validation fails on the other hand the space is not reserved on the page for the message if the validation succeeds that's important to keep in mind so the span tag is now rendered with style display colon none let's set that to dynamic and see if that solves our problem so I come here set the display property of this to dynamic and I do the same thing for required field validator as well okay so now let's go ahead and run this and see if your if our problem is solved so now I don't enter age so age is required and if I enter an invalid age 121 age must be between 1 and 120 1 and 100 so let's view the source now and once you look at the source look at how these tags are rendered now you know the span tag with the style display colon none display colon none so when a tag is rendered with style display colon none if they're not displayed then they won't occupy that space on the screen and that's why we have the messages displayed as expected okay now we have seen how to use range validator control basically to validate age which is an integer now let us quickly look at another example where we want to validate maybe dates okay so let's quickly insert 
another row below this uh, current row. So I have a row here. Maybe I have a field called date available, maybe for the interview or for an appointment, whatever. And uh, we want to provide a text box where the user can type in date. So let's drag and drop a text box onto the web form. And let's uh, stretch this text box so the width is 150, just like the about text box. And let's give it a meaningful name. And I'm going to call this txt date available. So txt date available. OK. Now, obviously, if I want to validate the range for this, I need the range validator control. And this is going to be the date. So instead of using a brand new range validator, I'm going to copy and paste the existing one so that we have less typing to do. So let's copy that and paste it next to the date available text box. So this is going to validate date available text box. So I'm going to call this range validator date available. And let's give it a meaningful name. Date available must be between, let's say we want to allow only the dates that fall within this year. So 01, 01, 2012. And it's going to be 31, 12, 2012. Control to validate. It's going to be TXT date available. And four color is going to be red. And the most important thing is the minimum value, maximum value, and the type. The minimum value is going to be 1, 1, 2012. So let's copy that and paste it there. And maximum value is going to be 31, 12, 2012. And the type, the type here is going to be date. That's it. So let's run this now and see if it works as expected. Now it should validate for a valid date that falls only within this year. Any date outside that will be invalid. And let's say I'm saying 12 and maybe 12 and 2013. This is not a valid date range. So date available must be between that. So let's give you know 2012 and click Save. That error message is gone. I give maybe 98, which is a valid age. So data saved. OK. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.